The Arcos project looks at safeguarding coastal energy generation and supply. We're interested in the energy sector because a lot of its infrastructure is on the coast. In the future, with more renewable energy coming online, such as offshore wind farms, tidal streaming devices and lagoons, understanding coastal processes that influence flood and erosion risk will become more important. We've developed new coastal monitoring techniques using radar and have been chasing winter storms. This information will help us understand the potential impacts of changing storm conditions and sea level rise, ensuring coastal infrastructure and communities remain resilient in the future. Stakeholders in the project were involved right from the outset, whether that be the energy sector, local authority or coastal communities. The reason for having them there right from the outset is that our outputs could be designed accordingly to address their key questions. I work for Sefton Council where I'm responsible for coastal defence and flood risk management. I also sit on the Regional Flood and Coastal Committee where I'm the coastal specialist. As coastal managers it's important that we monitor the coast because unlike a road where it's there when you come back to it the next day, the coast moves. We need to understand what it's doing and why it's doing it and monitoring is an important part of that. Coastal management has been um, taking place for hundreds of years along the coast but more recently there's the potential impacts of climate change which make it even more complex so aspects such as sea level rise, increased precipitation and increased storminess um, mean that there are increasing risks of erosion and flooding and these are the main concerns of the local community. Suffolk is a very complex and dynamic system. It's constantly changing through natural variability and through coastal management. There are three main types of approaches to coastal management under the shoreline management plan. Hold the line, manage realignment and manage retreats. CFAS has a responsibility for delivering to EDF all the work um, that is required to assess, mitigate and monitor the new nuclear builds. So that's here at Sizewell and also at the new development at Hinkley, which is the next generation of nuclear reactors in the UK. We do monitoring, uh, physical modelling, uh, observational mo monitoring and looking at geomorphology and linking those through to our ecological and water quality colleagues. Arcoa's research contributes to our research in a number of ways. Their work uh, is on a slightly different spatial scale to ours, so they look at a like, wider context. I work on a very small scale, directly in front of the power stations, they work on a much larger scale. CFAS is interested in the coastal response to storms because these power stations and other developments will be over 150 years. Therefore we need to know the accretion and erosion processes associated with storms. We need to know what happens and how quickly a beach is eroded um, as these are important in, in ensuring the stability of the station over that time. Coastal monitoring is, is very important because if we don't understand how the coast is behaving and we obtain that understanding through monitoring, we cannot manage the coast. We collect all sorts of information to help us understand how storms impact coastlines. So that includes uh, wave information, tidal information, but particularly how the waves and the tides change the beach. So we do a lot of surveying work on the beach. We carefully monitor the weather forecast and uh, we usually know a couple of days in advance whether a storm is coming. We issue a, a code amber when we think a storm might be coming and we mobilize the team. And then sort of a day before the storm hits, we make a decision whether it's going to be a, a big storm or not. And if it is, we set out and then we deploy our instruments. In situ measurements will always tend to be more accurate than radar. However, where radar wins is the ability to map large areas uh, from the shore so we can look at how Things like currents and water depths vary across maybe tens of square kilometres at once. Radar, because it's, it's designed to be run continuously on ships, uh, it makes an ideal tool for long-term monitoring of an observation of the coast. So we can put a radar on a cliff top for weeks, months or even years and monitor what happens at that coastline all through that period in all weathers, day and night. One of the key objectives to the Arcos project is mapping vulnerable coastal areas in response to sea level rise. As sea levels rise and climate change brings increased storm frequency and magnitude, many of these vulnerable coastal areas that act as a buffer between the sea and our infrastructure are being eroded. 
The health of a coastline has many aspects. One of these is the sediment budget. That's the amount of material being eroded versus the amount being deposited. This budget often follows seasonal variations, so it be, can be quite hard to draw conclusions from short-term observations. The radar method that we've developed offers long-term volumetric survey capabilities, so it will enable coastal managers to make better decisions about the health of a coastline and where defences need to be placed over the longer term. There are two main challenges in the energy supply area. One of the first is to do with the um, environment and the changing weather patterns, which can affect the electrical system and delivery to the home. But also there's the growing population and how do we make the electricity network more efficient in terms of delivering energy and doesn't affect the planet too much. The environmental effects, we've seen it quite recently in terms of the position of the jet stream, for example, over the UK, and we've seen a succession of lows coming in with high winds, and that can affect the overhead lines, especially on the coastal areas where this project was uh, uh, looking at the, um, the impact of the, the weather patterns. In the short term, we'll see a reinforcement of the energy infrastructure to, to deal with the extreme weather patterns. But over a longer period of time, as the sea ri level rises, we'll gradually retreat back from the coast. And I think the, the infrastructure will gradually move further and further inland. Beach mega nourishment is a new and ambitious approach to increase the resilience of UK shorelines. The Crown Estate doesn't have a direct role in coastal protection and flood defence, but what it can offer is resources and the access to its resources to make strategic intervention more economic and, and, and contribute to the, the flexibility of, the, of options around coastal defence. Landscaping is looking at coastal protection in a different way. It's thinking about the broader benefits associated with coastal protection, so it's thinking about habitat creation, it's thinking about regeneration of communities and infrastructure protection. It's largely around putting more sand on a beach. The current limitations to, for, for introducing sandscaping in the UK are largely, I think, around imagination. Uh, we haven't done it before. Uh, it, we need to think about how we can do those things and understand the issues better. Storm monitoring has found that UK nuclear power station sites tend to be quite resilient. Some of them are placed along rocky coasts, which don't change that much. Others are placed alongside gravel beaches, but in locations where the waves don't impact them. Development of new radar techniques and technologies have led to the early prototyping of a mobile deployment system, which surveys intertidal areas. Monitoring over seasons and years will improve our understanding of long-term coastal evolution.